96 miles of a pure concrete wall surrounded West Berlin. There was no crossing of the borders, and if you tried, you were killed. Approximately 192 people died trying to reach freedom, which was ironically 100 feet from them. This was the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall was a symbol of communism, and when it collapsed in 1989, it successfully ended that harsh government in Europe. The year was 1917, and the leader of Russia at the time was Nicholas II. The 1917 winter was one of Russia's coldest. Families were standing in a line that stretched for what seemed like forever, waiting for their bread. The bakery had no flour and no ways of cooking bread, so they had to send people back home, starving. The citizens of Russia were becoming fed up with the government and how they couldn't spare any money to at least supply food. This was the cause of the revolution. The country turned into chaos. Everywhere a person turned, there were demonstrators and protesters arguing for bread and peace. To calm the citizens, a political group rose named the Soviets, led by Vladimir Lenin. They were the founders of the Soviet Union and the communism in Russia. 28 years later, the Soviet Union, United States, France, and Britain defeated Germany in World War II. An agreement was made that each country that defeated Berlin would receive a portion of it. Three years later, in 1948, France, Britain, and the United States joined their three sections to create a democratic West Berlin. The Soviet Union was offered to join with them, but they refused, creating a communist East Berlin. It was obvious that the two sides would never get along. Joseph Stalin, the leader of the USSR, wanted Berlin to be completely controlled by the Soviet Union. To try and accomplish this, Stalin closed all land and water access to West Berlin. This was the blockade of 1948 to 1949. The western side was cut off from all supplies from the areas around them. The only way for the two million citizens to receive food and other essentials was by air. This was almost impossible because it would take 1,000 flights a day to deliver. The United States offered to try. Their first day was successful, so they continued doing this routine every day. By April 1949, the airlift operations were doing very well. This showed to Stalin that his plan was not working. He eventually gave in. This act of a blockade proved to the United States that the Soviet Union was prepared to directly confront their opponents and that this confrontation could lead to war. In East Berlin, people were upset about the government. A new leader, Khrushchev, had taken Joseph Stalin's place as the communist leader. So it was a, a question of which system is better for the Berliner. And a lot of them started to leave East Berlin to go to West Berlin have a little taste of freedom. And the ones that left are the high, highly educated ones, the doctors, the teachers, the professors, uh, the engineers, so. Khrushchev needed a way to keep people in their part of Berlin. He finally found no other choice but to build a wall. On August 17, 1961, both sides of Berlin woke up to construction. As they looked out their windows, they saw hundreds of workers placing blocks and blocks of concrete on top of one another. You know, not only did they build the wall, they really went and um, increased the security all along the border between East Germany and West Germany. The Berlin Wall was set up with a backland wall, signal fence, a variety of barriers, watchtowers, lighting systems, column tracks, control tracks, anti-vehicle trenches, and the infamous concrete wall. They weren't going to let anyone pass. It was still possible to escape, despite the barriers. Some people jumped from the windows that were directly on the border. Others dug tunnels under the concrete barrier. Some even flew over with hot air balloons. These were very risky though. The guards were given orders to shoot anyone trying to pass. The most well-known person to be shot and killed while trying to cross over the wall was 18-year-old Peter Fetcher. He was shot and left to bleed to death in full view of the West Berliners. This happened exactly one year after the wall was built. It reminded everyone how dangerous the wall was and that the West Berliners were helpless when it came to saving the Eastern escapees. Families were also separated. Some would not see their relatives for another 20 years. Others would never see them again. 
It wasn't possible to visit West Berlin without noticing the wall. It cut off train tracks and completely went through streets. The, the western part was very lively and stores and lots of restaurants and all kinds of good things going on, lots of people. We took a tour into East Berlin and it was like night and day. It was gray. There weren't any people. John F. Kennedy visited West Berlin on June 26, 1963, where he gave one of his most famous speeches. All free men, wherever they may live, are citizens of Berlin. And therefore, as a free man, I take pride in the word, Ich bin ein Berliner. This showed that America wasn't going to ignore Berlin, but try to help. JFK was adored by the West Berliners, so when he was assassinated, they placed flowers all over the wall in honor of him. In March 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev became the president of the Soviet Union. Immediately, he was contacted by Ronald Reagan to discuss the Berlin Wall. They first met in Geneva, Switzerland, and very little progress was made in trying to convince Gorbachev to tear down the wall. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. It took many more meetings and this very persuasive speech for him to finally make a decision. I'm Peter Jennings in New York. Just a short while ago, astonishing news from East Germany, where the East German authorities have said, in essence, that the Berlin Wall doesn't mean anything anymore. The wall that the East Germans put up in 1961 to keep its people in will now be breached by anybody one who wants to leave. It was 11.14 p.m. on November 11th, 1989, when an officer holding back a huge crowd of people yelled out, throw open the gates, and he let go. Hundreds of East Berliners ran into West Berlin. Some climbed on top of the wall and chanted, away with the wall. There were parties all over the streets of West Berlin, for both sides were ecstatic about the freedom just given to them. These celebrations lasted for days, as more and more people were traveling between the borders. Gorbachev didn't stop here. In addition to freedom of traveling, he granted freedom of the press and assembly, put security under the control of parliament, and separated the roles of party and government. In 1990, Gorbachev received the Nobel Peace Prize. Despite this event, the Soviet Union's economy was still in very bad shape. They had spent so much money on the wall and controlling it that it added a large amount of money to their debt that they were already in. When Lithuania had their first election, the Communist Party lost power and Lithuania declared independence from the Soviet Union. Soon followed was Estonia. Giving the republics the freedom to vote for their Congress of Deputies encouraged them to declare independence. Russia even became independent. They made Boris Yeltsin their president, who became a huge rival with Gorbachev. Gorbachev was desperate to keep the Soviet Union intact. He cut the military budget to save money and even tried to organize a cash loan from the United States. The old-style Communist Party thought these acts were going against the way of governing, and they came up with a plan to get rid of Gorbachev. It failed and was the cause of the fall of the Communist Party in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was no longer strong without the Communist Party. So the other republics immediately took advantage of this and declared independence. Soon, the Soviet Union collapsed. The idea of declaring independence from communist control spread across Europe. It was a domino effect, and soon communism disappeared from almost everywhere in Europe. The Berlin Wall did not only represent communism in the Soviet Union, but in Europe as well. When communism fell in Europe, it gave freedoms that people thought they'd never have. You see the joy on people's faces, and you see what freedom means to them. It makes you realize that you can't stifle or suppress people's desire for liberty.